Number five. In figure 4.7, the net external force on the 24 kilogram mower is stated to be 51 newtons. If the force of friction right, opposing the motion is 24 newtons, what force in newtons is the person exerting on the mower? Suppose the mower is moving at 1.5 meters per second when the force F is removed. How far will the mower go? All right. So uh, let's first draw a coordinate system. All right, so we have, according to our picture on the upper right, there's a net force pointing in the uh, right-hand direction. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place that on my coordinate system, but I'm going to place that uh, above, meaning I'm going to I'm gonna place it up here, just knowing that the net has to be pointing forward, okay? So in other words, I could call it F net, or I could say that the sum of the forces in this direction, which is the same as the net force, okay, is equal to 51 newtons pointing to the right. Now it says that the force of friction opposes this motion and is a value of 24 newtons. So in terms now of my coordinate system, right, that would represent a force pointing in this direction, okay, of a, and it has a value of 24 newtons. All right, so this is the force of friction. And let me call it F sub little f, force of friction. And that has a value of 24 newtons. Now remember that's going to be negative because it's pointing in the negative x direction. So it now says what force F is the person exerting. Well, obviously if there's a net force in the positive x direction, but I don't have anything there yet, I'm missing something, right? So let me just label that as my unknown. Okay, so let me draw a little line above the axis here. And let's call this, this is F, right? That's the unknown. So how do we... How do we create an equation out of this? Well, it's fairly simple. Remember that the sum of all the forces, okay, in the x direction, all right, equals, I mean, it equals ma, right? That is true, max. But we could also expand this formula, okay, to mean instead of max, let me just erase it. I'm going to say it's the, it would be the sum, right, of f1 plus f2 plus f3, right, etc. obviously. So in this particular problem, we get the sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal to the sum of F, capital F, right here, plus, right, the force of friction. Okay, now the sum of all the forces in the x direction was 51 newtons. I'm looking for F, and I know that the force of friction, since it's pointing in the negative x direction, it was negative 24. Right? So how do I solve for this? So I just have to add, because right, this is really negative, I just have to add the 24 to both sides. And now I get that the force applied to the lawnmower by the person is going to be 75 newtons. All right, that's probably what you may have figured out intuitively, uh, but it's good to work with the uh, calculations on this, especially when the problems are easy, so that you get used to it. All right, so that's fine. So we got that force, okay? Now it says, suppose the mower is moving at 1.5 meters per second when the force F is removed. Okay, so that means, right, we let's say this little dot represents a lawnmower, and it's traveling this way with a certain velocity. And as soon as he releases it, we're going to call it the initial velocity, so 1.5 meters per second. It says, how far will he go, or the lawnmower go, right? So we've got to find this distance, let's just say. So we'll say that that is what we're looking for until the mower comes to a stop. So what does that mean at, when the mower reaches this particular location? That means it stopped. So I'll consider that the final velocity, right? That would be zero meters per second. Okay, now there's only one thing that I'm missing. I don't know anything about time, but what about is there an acceleration? And if there is, what would it be? Well, let's think about it, okay? So as soon as he takes his hands off the mower, right? What's, what force is left? Remember, the mower is still gonna move forward because it has some velocity, right? But what, what's the force that's left? He's no longer applying the 75 newtons, right? So the only force that'll be left is the force of friction. Interesting. So now the only force acting on this lawnmower right now will be simply the force of friction. And remember that the force of friction was equal to negative 24 newtons. Okay, so how can we now relate this force maybe to an acceleration? So remember the formula that I wrote before on the upper right-hand side the sum of the forces in the x direction should equal the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration in that direction. 
So the sum of all the forces, it's only the frictional force, so that's negative 24. What's the mass of the lawnmower? It said 24 kilograms. 24 kilograms now multiplied by my acceleration. And notice beautifully how this works out. The acceleration then in the x direction is negative one, right? Negative 1.0 meters per second squared. That's what we should have expected, right? If the lawnmower is moving with a velocity this way, but it's coming to a stop, there must be a force that opposes the motion. And the acceleration is part of the force that opposes that motion, and it's negative. So that makes sense. So here, in, uh, including it along with my initial velocity of 1.5, final velocity of zero, I also know that the acceleration of this object is gonna be negative 1.0 meters per second. Now, considering all the variables I have here and knowing that I need to calculate my displacement, what formula should we use? I like this one, right? Some of the four, uh, excuse me, <laughs> the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity was 1.5. The acceleration we said was negative 1.0. And now I can solve for x, right? So let's clean it up a little bit. So this is zero is equal to, so 1.5 squared, what do we get? 2.25, great. 2.25, now this is minus 2.0x. Add the 2.0x to the other side. And now we simply get 2.0x is equal to 2.25. And then what do we gotta do, guys? Divide out the two, right? So now x, which is my displacement, will be 2.25 divided by two. 1.13 when we consider significant figures. I might have added a significant figure in there. So maybe it's just 1.1, all right? And that'll be in meters. And that's now the uh, displacement. That's how far it'll go before it comes to a stop. All right, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe. It would help us out tremendously and it'd help us reach more students just like yourself. All right, so if, you, if we've helped you out in any way, give us a hand. We'd so appreciate it. Thank you very much.